Hello gentlemen, here is five more game knowledge enhancements on Tarkov. But first, before we get into the video, I've taken notice that only 0.4% of people have actually subscribed to the channel, which is quite unfortunate. If you'd like to see more videos like these, consider subscribing. Thank you. Now on to the video. So starting with min maxing experience. You could do a sudden trick to gain more experience than usual. If you search your crate normally, you gain regular experience and the average player will think, yeah, this is standard, which is true. However, if you take those items out of the crate, you'll notice you gain even more experience. And yes, that experience contributes further into your overall experience gained within the raid. The trick I like to perform is take every single item you find even if it's useless or unwanted, by control clicking to then control click it back out of your backpack. This is a very quick and small thing that will go a long way and better for you in the future. Why is that you might ask? Whenever you exit the raid, you gain a survived multiplier of 1.3 times to the experience gained throughout the raid. All the small items you picked up and put back add up and is 100% worth to climb faster to that sweet spot of level 42. Up next is the flea market refresh. There are two ways of this, and I'll get to the second one afterwards. First way is very simple, but it will cause you to do a capture if spam too much. So open up the flea market, then proceed by clicking on the top, flea market again. And now you've unlocked a quick refresh. You can now refresh the market by pressing spacebar. This can come in very handy for some limited trades such as the black key card from Mechanic, the thick items case, and the thick weapons case, as these items are very high in demand. However, due to recent changes in the total stock, it's not much of a problem anymore. Now for the last point. What way do players usually switch from the stash to flee? I personally used to go from the stash, press escape, traders, and at the top, flea market. Then they added the flea market option at the bottom. Very good quality of life change. But then they also did something else. Whenever you went onto the flea market and for example, forgot if you had a certain item or not, now you can just press tab and you're straight back into your stash. Same goes to returning back into the flea market from where you left off. Now for some extreme value barters. As a lot of you mentioned in the comments previously, the 6B47 helmet from Ragman level 1, there's a barter for two bleaches, which can be obtained very easily from either finding it in industrial areas or crates. The other option is to craft it in the laboratory inside the hideout for a relatively cheap price of one soap, averaging around 8K, one alkaline, averaging around 16K, and one pack of sodium, averaging around 15k. This total of 39k will get you two and a half helmets. The craft yields five bleach, with the barter requiring only two. The helmet's average cost is 30k, so 39k for two and a half helmets is great for value. The next barter is a class four rig, which was featured in my previous video. The M2 rig, unlocked from Ragman level three, which is quite high, but it's 100% worth it. When you get there, for three R glasses, aka round frame glasses, and three cold pack face shields, you can get yourself a large class four rig, which protects both thorax and stomach. The large emphasis being on the size within a backpack. The rig usually doesn't get taken, which is perfect for insurance fraudulent activities. Now for the last spotter. It's one of my personal favorites and considerably the best gun in Tarkov as a patch, 0.1303, the RSAS. Unlocked by reaching loyalty level three from Peacekeeper for 16 total bear and USEC tags of level 15 or above, eight for bear and eight for USEC each. Scopes this patch have changed in terms of pricing to performance ratio. This comes down to how much it costs to run the scope to how good it really is. 
and are there any alternatives to it? The classic Razer HD, Voodoo, Boris and Schmidt & Bender come to mind when it comes to good scopes on guns with a 1x to 6x. However, due to certain changes made by BSG, these scopes can mainly be obtained by finding them in raid instead of buying them, traditionally from traders. This change made these scopes very desirable, which in turn skyrocketed their price on the flea market. So alternatively, here are some scopes which don't take a large buy out of the Ruber wallet and still hold their ground. Don't be mistaken, these scopes still have their own downsides with pros and cons. Starting with the hammer. Classic choice among veteran players, but has come a long way from being one of the best scopes. Still holds his ground but suffers at range and a bit of small eye relief. This scope only has one choice of red dot at the top, being the delta point, which is good amongst the red dots, but certainly not the best. Next up is the JP Enterprises 30mm scope mount. This scope mount allows the player to choose from any of the good scopes in Tarkov. The mount also has the ability to attach a delta point on top just like the hammer. The downsides to this are the scope combo is only good if the weapon's recoil is low. Any high recoil gun with this combo will suffer greatly. Another downside to this combo is, the gun itself can at times take up 50-70% to of the player's screen, which can be a huge disadvantage in certain scenarios. Now lastly from a personal favourite this swipe, the Bravo 4. This scope can be comboed with the Boris Fast Fire, which is considerably the best red dot sight in talk of currently, as a patch .1303. This combo allows the player to engage in short, medium, and in certain long range combat. Short range combat with the red door is perfect, with minimal wobble and inaccuracy when firing the weapon. The scope also has a secret advantage. Since the red door is quite a ways above the barrel of the weapon, the smoke that emits from the barrel after consistent fire does not affect the player as much if compared to a regular hollow sight. Now for a bonus. The Bravo 4 and the Hammer have an advantage that 9% of all other scopes do not. These scopes don't drop as much FPS as other scopes do on top of. My low to mid end PC isn't the best, so I personally benefit a lot from having a higher frame rate while scoped in. Some players are unaware that Tarkov has a very strict hitbox system. This allows the player to look down and avoid getting headshot from behind. I like to perform this strategy whenever I go to loot a body in an unsafe location in comparison to going prone, which most players tend to do. Whenever you're prone, yes, you are a low target which may or may not make it hard for the enemy to hit your head, but whenever you look straight down and have a full head plus air protection like a ULAC, more often than not they cannot hit your PMC's face, resulting them to attempt on penetrating the helmet instead. Whenever you're standing whilst looking down, you're free to instantly sprint towards cover. Whereas, in a prone position, you're somewhat stunlocked for a second or two before being able to maneuver. Similarly to this, I like to lean by pressing Q and E whilst looking down simultaneously to decrease the chance of getting headshot whenever I'm out of stamina. This has saved me and can save you in numerous scenarios, if you are of stamina or in a bad position. Whenever a player loots a body, to increase efficiency, you can control plus left click on items to instantly move loot items into your backpack. This also applies to gear, however, magazines, grenades, and ammo gets prioritized into your rig and pockets. If you alt plus left click gear on a body, this instantly equips the item in an open slot. This can come in very handy when picking up a weapon of a dead player to upgrade mid fight, or if your teammate has died in an unsafe location with a better weapon. Another small feature that many people miss is checking their gun's fire mode. The traditional way of doing so is by pressing B. However, if the player does this around a squad, they'll be giving away their position. So instead, by pressing Alt plus B, the PMC does a silent check of the gun's fire mode. Now lastly, a weird gimmick that very few people know is unADSing without making any sound. This can come in very handy in some situations for baiting your stamina depletion and such. The regular way of unADSing is by pressing right click if you're on toggle or just letting go of right click. However, 
if you instead press Alt W whilst holding ADS, you will go into blind fire and then return to regular stance, which will un ADS your weapon without making any sound. Alright, hope you learnt something new today. Good luck on your raise, gentlemen.